Everybody, video here for you today. Now, in a majority of my mound builder videos, and especially from this part of the world, I have mentioned copper artifacts, copper chest plates, copper jewelry, copper tubes, copper beads, copper in fixed in the skulls of some people buried in the mounds. Well, let's talk about this mystery today. We are going to go down to Isle Royal National Park. This is off the northern tip of Minnesota, but this is actually Michigan, and it's right down here. Isle Royal is about 45, 50 miles long. I believe Randall mentioned it in one of his latest videos. And you can just tell by looking closely at this island, this was carved by an ancient flood event. I've also had some messages on this feature off the northwestern tip. What is that exactly right there? It seems like a depression just off the northwest coast. I'm not sure what that is, but I find it interesting. It's pretty much the precise size as a Roseau structure I mentioned in my Younger Dryas video from a few weeks ago. Here's a story I saw pop up a few weeks ago, 4,500 year old Isle Royal Copper Mining District named National Historic Landmark. Slowly over time, the full scale of this ancient mining has come to light on Isle Royal. It says the newly designated National Historic Landmarks Native American Copper Mining Cluster landscape as it looks today. Each person in the photo is positioned at the center of a mining pit. Here is another article from just a few weeks ago, Ancient Native Copper Mines on Isle Royal named National Landmark. Indigenous people mined copper 4,500 years ago on the Lake Superior Island using it for knives and spear tips. And here is a look by one of these ancient mines. We'll go over to Google Earth here. This is the area where this new designated area was found right down here. It's called the Minong Mine area based on some 19th century mines, but the area that these new mines were found in was right down here. Just reading a little here, it says, one of the oldest examples of indigenous mining documented in North America, a series of small Isle Royal copper mines has been designated an official national historic landmark. Archeological and historical evidence suggests copper mining activity by native groups at the Minong copper mine started at least 4,500 years ago and continued into the 1900s. The National Park Service announced a designation Thursday, and this article is a few weeks old. Minong is the Ojibwe word for Isle Royal. The newly designated historical site covers about 200 acres on Lake Superior's largest island, including multiple small pits where copper was mined, and an apparent settlement where native people lived near the mines at the McCargo Grove. The site also includes remnants of the Minong Mining Company, which mined on the island from 1875 to 1885, one of several short-lived copper mining operations on the island at the time. It says when humans first arrived in North America some 15 to 20,000 years ago, Isle Royal was still covered with thick glacial ice, the Park Service notes. By the time the ice receded from Lake Superior, based on whatever happened, an Isle Royal rose above the waters of the lake about 10,000 years ago. Indigenous people had already begun to occupy parts of the Great Lakes. The island visitors developed a method of extracting raw copper from the bedrock by beating it free with rounded handheld beach cobbles. Numerous pits were dug in the most productive locations on the island, especially along the Minong Ridge. Recent archaeological excavations have uncovered a large number of hammer stones in the ancient mines, which are now filled by soil and covered with vegetation. Here's another link I will leave below overhead look at Isle Royal there. It says the area is believed to have been inhabited as far back as 4,500 years ago. And could it even been farther? Well, we'll talk about that. It says according to research published by Michigan Technological University, Michigan Tech, that is where my father went to college. It says pottery and tools, including projectile points, have been found at numerous sites. It seems people both inhabited the island and others only visited. It remains important to Ojibwe people today. But here, stone hammers from ancient mines of Isle Royal. This drawing was done by Newton Horace Winchell, and he was brought up in my interview with Scott Walter that I did a few years ago. Here's another article I found. This one's a bit older. It says, miners left a pollution trail in the Great Lakes 6,000 years ago. Scientists find evidence of ancient copper mining in polluted lake sediments from Isle Royal National Park. And here is a look from the inside of a mine that was mined recently and in ancient times. But that is a look inside the entrance at the Minong Mine located on Michigan's Isle Royal National Park. The site contains remnants of a 19th century copper mine as well as prehistoric mining activity. 
It says the veins of copper that ripple through its bedrock drew the attention of early Native Americans who used the metal to make tools. However, many details of their activities, such as when they mined, remain hidden behind the thick haze of time. Now, new research suggests that the Isle Royal mining boom peaked about 6,000 years ago and left a legacy of aquatic pollution. The high levels of copper, lead, and potassium in sediments from a cove on the island point to a long, intense period of indigenous mining. Researchers presented these results, published recently in the journal The Holocene, in a poster session on the 16th of December 2014 at the American Geophysical Union Fall Meeting. Just read a little more, it says, Evidence of Ancient Mining. European explorers first noticed evidence for indigenous copper mines back in the 1800s. In some places, miners had dug down more than 20 meters into bedrock, an impressive feat considering their limited tools. However, without a way to date the pits directly, the timing of these mining activities could only be loosely constrained by the age of the copper artifacts found in the Great Lakes region. Archaeologists have dated many objects associated with the so-called old copper complex, but the objects span thousands of years, so what they did is they looked for pollution layer on the bottom related to the smelting of copper, and they dated that to over 6,000 years ago, but here are some copper artifacts used by the indigenous people. It says copper artifacts left by the old copper complex. It says the spike in pollution began 6,500 years ago and lasted for about a millennium. Then abruptly it ended, suggesting the mining ended too. That's a long time ago. Pollution did not rise again until the mid-1800s when mining resumed on Isle Royal and smelting began on the Keweenaw Peninsula and leaded gasoline emissions grew. The scientists do not know why mining screeched to a halt. They speculate that miners may have exhausted all easily easily, not easily, easily accessible veins and moved on. Climate changes may have also played a role. Evidence from lake sediments around the Midwest suggests climate began to get drier. In time, geologic clues may continue to provide more information. Here's another article I will leave below. Here is a pic of ancient hammer stones atop the poor rock pile near McCargo Cove, photographed in July 1954. It says, it will never be known when the first man ventured out across Lake Superior to Isle Royal, but by 2500 BC or shortly after, North American Indians began to exploit the pure copper deposits that were exposed on the surface of the island. Just reading a little more, it says, more than 1,000 pits attributed to the ancient people have been located on the island, but since the activity covered a period of at least 1500 years, there is no basis for suggesting any highly organized efforts to procure the copper. And that's all debatable, I guess. It says, rather, the mining probably was pursued in the course of an annual round of hunting, fishing, and collecting berries and plants. The copper itself was coal hammered into knives, points, and a variety of ornaments, either on Isle Royal or taken to the mainland and then worked. Artifacts of Lake Superior copper ultimately made their way to the Southern Lake states and New England, and really a majority of the upper ancient United States. It says, unfortunately, very, very little is known about the way of life of these earliest miners since no habitation sites from the mining period have been located on Isle Royal. These ancient copper mines have been looked into for a long time. Here is Newton Horace Winchell, a giant in the field of geology in Minnesota, taught at the University of Minnesota, and here is his paper that he wrote on these ancient copper mines of Isle Royal in 1881. But some pretty interesting things in here. Talks about the geology of the whole copper mining thing. Ancient artifacts. Talks about other things. Here are some hammer stones from some of the mines that he saw. Diagrams. I will leave this link below. Here's another link I will leave below. Copper mining. It says native copper vein on Washington Island, Isle Royal National Park. This view may be like what Native Americans found when they first visited the copper country. Such occurrences are not common anymore. They were dug out of the wave-washed shorelines. But here is a look at some of the geological processes that create the copper. A map here, and here is a look at many copper artifacts found in the Upper Peninsula in Michigan. This comes from Michigan Tech University. Now I will leave many links below. Here is another look at one of these sites on the island that they say was mined recently and in ancient times. And one of the reports from the early archaeologists who were here in the 1800s said he found a square temple mound, not very big, 
and he associated it with the mound builders. I found that very interesting because you don't hear another report of it. Is that still sitting out in the woods there, just overgrown and unrecognized? Well, I wonder about that. Just to give you an idea how vast some of the copper deposits were, here is the Ontonagon copper boulder. This weighed slightly over 3,700 pounds, almost two tons. And this is kept in the Smithsonian and local tribes in the upper Great Lakes. We're trying to get this return, part of their native heritage, and that was not allowed, and it's kept in the Smithsonian today. Now, to me, the most logical answer is the mound builders and that group with their massive trading network across the ancient United States. They are the most logical candidates to be doing most of the mining, but those very early dates of the mining makes you wonder. Here's an article from Graham Hancock's website. The shipping of Michigan copper across the Atlantic in the Bronze Age. This needed to be included in this video. But Jay Wakefield talks about shipwreck off the coast of Turkey where extraordinarily pure copper was found. And some people hypothesize that that came from the Great Lakes. I found this article very interesting. And since we have few solid answers for this very ancient mining, I think this needed to be included. But he shows a map of Isle Royal here has a picture of an ancient mine coming from the UP of Michigan. And then there are some petroglyphs found in this area around these ancient mines. Does this have a connection to it? Well, that's all debatable, but here is a ship petroglyph clearly seen. There is a giant handprint from this area. Here are some other symbols. There is a man with a bird for the head. What does that represent? I've talked about the bird man at Cahokia coming from the mound builders, other bird symbolism. Circle with the cross in the middle, what does that represent? Well, that's all debatable, but I found it very interesting here. Ancient petroglyphs in the area, these ancient copper mines. I've had more than a few requests for this video, and this is something I've always been interested in. My mom's family comes from the UP of Michigan. I'm familiar with places like Hancock, Houghton, Dollar Bay, Chassel, Calumet, but here's a look at a prehistoric copper mine coming from Isle Royal. This is just a fascinating topic. And the term copper country, well, I've heard that ever since I was a little kid. Now, I will also leave the link to this PDF below. Aboriginal Copper Mines of Isle Royal National Park, written by William H. Holmes. It says in the spring of 1892, the writer was engaged in gathering material for the anthropological exhibit of the Smithsonian Institution at the World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago and says a main feature of this display would be featuring the ancient mining in the United States, places in Ohio, Arkansas, and ancient copper mines of Isle Royal and Lake Superior. It says, although exhibits of the collections procured through these explorations were made in due course of time, full reports of the work and the ob observations made at some of the points have never been published. So I wonder how much of this information made it to the public when this was written about, about 100, 140 years ago by different people. Just doing a general search on my channel, I've talked about Lake Superior Copper in Georgia, talked about it in New Jersey at the Rosencrantz site, talked about it in numerous sites in Mississippi in the southern United States, Alabama. So it seems the vast ancient trade network in ancient America was very, very impressive. Here are just a few of the copper artifacts found in the mound builders. These are found all over the ancient United States. Here are some Birdman effigies. I think one of these was found at Etowah, one was found at Spiro Mounds, and this one I think on the right was found in Illinois at a fairly unknown mound builder site. But copper seemed to be a very sacred metal to these ancient people in the United States. Here's another link I will leave below. I just think this is a fascinating story. I'm concentrating mainly on Isle Royal, but there was certainly ancient copper mines found in the Keweenaw Peninsula of Upper Michigan. That's an area I'm pretty familiar with. If you have some information on ancient mines coming from that part of the world, please leave it below. But here is the Minong Mine on Isle Royal. People were here a long, long time ago doing mining. Then people were here in the 19th century. Some flooding, I guess, in some of these mines. But there is a look. This is just a fascinating mystery, and it ties in well with my Ancient America videos that featured all those copper artifacts. That has been a long requested video, the ancient copper mines on Isle Royal, also the UP of Michigan, the Keweenaw Peninsula. Many ancient copper mines were found in this area of the world. A lot of people wanted me to do that video, so today's the day. Hope you thought that was interesting, and you all have a very nice day.